joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, the sun above. Let the clouds of sin and sadness drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird on flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy. Ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Good morning. Pentecost greetings. Did you remember to wear red today? That's the color of fire. It's the color of the Holy Spirit. Did you remember to assemble a little bread and wine? Or if you don't drink wine, maybe a wine substitute. We're going to have Holy Communion in a few minutes. Let's open our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and please join me in the collect prayer. Let us pray. God, our Creator and Redeemer, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things are innumerable there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Le Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face in the ground. First reading, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Trying to start. Okay. When the day of Pentecost, Pentecost came, had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout, devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? 
And how is that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Pathian, Pathians, Nididis, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappado Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pomophilia, Egypt, and parts of Lib Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they were filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last day it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The second reading is found in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the feast of victory for our God. Gospel reading for this Pentecost festival is found in the Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Holy Spirit has got at least three jobs. And I doubt if the Holy Spirit will get unemployed very soon. The first job is to unite God the Father and God the Son in love. The Son differentiates himself from the Father and says, I'm going to go make a world, a creation. That's so you and I can get born and become part of God's world. The Son also becomes incarnate, right, in Jesus of Nazareth, and even suffers and dies, and from the cross the Son of God says to the Father of God, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Son feels not just separation, but a little bit of estrangement. <clears throat> The job of the Holy Spirit is to unite the Father and Son in love, no matter how much separation or even estrangement is felt in life, in death, in time, and eternity. So the Holy Spirit's going to be busy for all of eternity. Holy Spirit also works day and night to unite you and me and all the members of the family at Cross and Crown Lutheran Church and School. The Holy Spirit would like you and me to love each other just as God the Father and God the Son love each other. You think we should help the Holy Spirit out in this job? The second job of the Holy Spirit is to make the Easter living Christ present in your and my heart and soul, in your and my faith. The Holy Spirit collapses time. The resurrected Jesus from Easter becomes present in your and my faith right here and now. And if you want to find Jesus, you look inside. That's the Christ of faith, actually. We Lutherans like to say that we're justified by faith and that that's a work of God's grace. Well, here's how it works. The Holy Spirit takes the living Christ, places the living Christ in your and my faith. So Christ lives in us and we live in Christ. We are sons and daughters, and children of God, just as Jesus is. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Third job. Holy Spirit gives us power. You know what it is to take an electrical plug and plug it into a wall socket and you get electrical power. Well, the Holy Spirit is kind of like that for you and me. We pray that the Holy Spirit will empower us to transform our lives. And St. Paul gives us a little list of what he calls the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, 
kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Wouldn't you like a little self-control? And I, I know I do from time to time. The Holy Spirit empowers us with these fruits, and over time they grow, and you and I grow in holiness and sanctity, or a, the best word is virtue. We become virtuous people, and these are our virtues. So if you would like the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you pray, give me some of that self-control, Holy Spirit. I want to be more loving and kind and compassionate. Ask the Holy Spirit for that power. You will get it. It doesn't come overnight like an Amazon product by a UPS, but it does come kind of like a seed that the Holy Spirit plants in the ground and it grows over time. But yes, you and I can be much more virtuous persons empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, the teenagers who are in our confirmation class are supposed to be taking notes on the pastor's sermon. Yeah, I wonder what I just said that could be so important. What did I say that maybe was a learning. What did I say that could appear in these sermon notes? I can't wait <laughs> to find out. Join me in the prayers of intercession. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit Transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you breathe life into our bodies and eternal life into our spirits. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all those who worship you this day, either from home or together in churches. Keep us bound together in community, in mutual care and compassion. Strengthen us for faithful endurance during this time of sorrow and distress. O oh God, you are our temple. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the well-being of creation, for the health of seas and rivers and lakes, and for the will to care for your earth. O oh God, you are our rainbow of promise. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for peace and justice in the world, for an end to war and international turmoil, for conquered in our troubled society, for the heads of states, legislators, and local civic leaders, that they enact wise procedures to deal with the coronavirus. O oh God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are facing the coronavirus, for all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future. We pray for physicians, nurses, and home care aides, medical researchers, and the World Health Organization. Fill the aching in our hearts with merciful power. O oh God, you are our everlasting arms. In your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray, O oh God, for all in need, for those suffering for the faith, for those who are poor, hungry, and homeless, and those who are sick and those awaiting death, and for all those we name before you here. O oh God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for all who died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life where sorrows will be no more. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now you may gather in front of you the communion elements, the bread, the wine, or a wine substitute, the words of institution, followed by the Lord's Prayer. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had taken a drink, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, as I lead us in the Lord's Prayer, you can pray out loud. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. If you're by yourself, take your bread by yourself. If you're with members of a family, serve each other. The body of Christ given for me and for you and for all of us at Cross and Crown. The blood of Christ shed for you and for me and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood strengthen you and me and all in Christ's family. Now and forever. Amen. Join me in the post-communion prayer. Eternal giver of life and light. This holy festival shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth and may shine as a light in the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may God, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you all, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 